with the advancement of technology and the advanced features available in video editing software, editors have almost limitless creative freedom when it comes to how to present a story to the viewer. Within this wide range, professional software offers the basic 3D effect, the perfect tool for animating still and motionless images. With this effect, screenshots, photos or graphics can move, rotate and interact with the viewer as if they were a living presence on scene. I will show you how Premiere Pro's basic 3D effect can make screenshots and still images dynamic. Before we start, let's create a new composition. I click on the new composition button. We create a 30 second workspace of 9020 by 1080. I'm going to show you how to make these static images dynamic in the most beautiful way. Our first example will be full page images. For example, a website. I direct this image here. In other words, I direct the image that we will give motion to the timeline and made the image appear here. Static images like this in your work or videos can bore the viewer. But you can add a little more movement to this image and activate its static feeling. The panel we will refer to is the effects and presets panel. The effect we will use here is the basic 3D effect, which we will also use in the next example. I take this effect as it is and drag it onto the image. And when I drag it onto the image, you will see some settings for this effect in the effect controls panel. They are simple settings. By changing these settings, we will be able to give your image a little more movement. First, Let's quickly see what the values in the effect controls panel do. Swivel allows us to rotate the screenshot on the horizontal axis. You can use this setting when you want to rotate the screenshot left or right. Look, when I swipe to the right and when I swipe to the left, this is how we can give movement. Tilt allows us to rotate the screenshot on the vertical axis. So you can use this setting to tilt it up and down. By combining these two features, we can create a beautiful animation. Distance to image allows us to control how far the screen image is from the camera and viewer. It has a logic-like scale. When we move it back, it zooms towards the screen. When we swipe to the right, it gives the feeling of moving away from the screen. We can use this when we need a zoom effect. It is useful. Specular highlight is one of the features that we can use to get a more realistic three-dimensional image of our object when we turn it. Look, I'm clicking on this. There is a flare effect here. When we slide the swivel or tilt effects like this, we will see the effect, the light effect. This will add a little bit more realism. I like that effect, so you can use that in your work if you like. Using these features, you can apply these effects to your static images or you can apply these effects to your videos. It doesn't have to be just screenshots. It can add depth or motion. Now that we know these features, we can do our work. With the timeline at the top, I click on the stopwatch icon on the left of both the swivel and tilt effects. And when I click on these two and press the letter U on the keyboard, with this layer selected, we will see the keyframes of the features I clicked on. So it will be much easier to check. I'm going to the fifth second and in the fifth second, I'm changing these values. Let's make a quick edit. For example, this is how I want it to end. This is the edit we have made. See, this is the effect from 0 to the 5th scene. In the beginning, we can do the opposite of these keyframes. For example, I'm rotating the top value to minus. Let's not rotate the bottom value to plus. It will look better that way. Look, I'm playing it now. It is moving very slowly. You can make them a little bit closer. For example, you can set them to happen in 2 seconds. Let's check the specular highlight value and see how it looks then. It looks good, but there is an unwanted feeling. At the beginning and at the end of the animations. I select both keyframes, right click and select keyframe assistant, easy ease. So it will be a software animation. But if that is not enough, I open the graph editor, right click and select edit speed graph if you have it selected. You can select both keyframes and edit it like this. Now, however, you want to edit it. For example, if you want it to start fast, if you want it to end slow, we need to make a shift to the left. Let's see. It starts fast and ends slow. It's a little bit more effective now. It starts fast and ends much slower. 
we may prefer not to see the black areas in the background. What did we say? We can change the distance to image option in this case. We don't need to keyframe it. We can directly zoom in on this. Look, when we did it like this and played it, we got such an effect. It will give better results with better quality images. I will even make the quality full. If you wish, you can activate position by pressing the letter P on the keyboard and scroll so that the background is not visible. Or you can zoom in a little bit more to make it even less likely that the background is visible. I'm playing it now. And look, I think it looks good. You can change this by changing these values with it as you wish. For example, if you want it to look like this, it will start here and end like this. But generally, screenshots that look upwards rather than downwards look much better. That's what I mean by upwards. This is the final version. Now let's alternatively see how we can animate images like comments. I'm going to delete this one and add a comment field instead. See, this is the comment. Let's make the comment a little bit bigger. With the scale feature and again, I can drag and drop this effect here. If the background is too simple, you can call the background anything. Let me add something like this here. The background shouldn't be empty. Look, this is our image. After adding the comment image here, I click on the stopwatch icons. Then I press the letter U so that we can see the keyframes here. We can directly provide the moment. This is our starting position. I'm going a little bit further. This is our end position. So it's a movement like this. Now let's select all the keyframes and select the Easy Ease option under the keyframe assistant and select these keyframes from the graph editor and lean them to one side. Should it start fast and end slow? Should it be like this or should it start slow and end fast? I think the other one is better. You can show it like this even if it is not full screen. Of course, you can try many different variations. For example, imagine that the position part is not here. But you can start here and quickly come here or come this way and then you see yourself here. Again, let's soften the keyframes with F9 or with Easy Ease. We can do that too. Start fast and end slow. Or we can set the end point here. We can set it to come from the left there. You can also achieve an effect like this. As you can see, the basic 3D effect is a great tool for adding depth of images. This is how you can animate your static images to create a more immersive and 3D impression for the viewer. You can easily use this effect when working with 2D elements such as graphics, texts or screenshots in this example. If we were to do this using After Effects 3D feature, it would take a little longer to get the look we are getting with camera animations. In this video, I have shown how to make still images dynamic. That's it for this video. I hope it was useful. If today's video was useful to you, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. Thank you for watching.